All right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a while since I was uh, back on E7. Uh, I'm always playing both of them, um, and uh, I've summoned uh, like in Fire Emblem. I don't summon. I just kind of save a lot because there's not a whole lot to summon for. Um, but on E7, there's usually stuff to summon, so I'll usually be summoning here and there. But I don't summon in like a big old chunk like I'm about to do today. So there's never really a reason to make a video on it. Um, so yeah, but I have summoned a bit. I mean, uh, uh, when we did the the new automaton tower um, with those uh, moonlight medals or whatever moonlight bookmarks, I actually got a second copy of uh, ML Crow, which I haven't fed into my first ML Crow yet because for one, I don't have the um, silver transmit stones to change it to the imprint concentration. I think that's what it's called. I forgot what the other one was. Imprint releaser. I think it might be it. I'm not sure. But I didn't have enough gold transmit stones to take advantage of that imprint anyway. Now, granted, he gives out a crit chance to like the other two slots, which is fine. Um, but it's not really worth like it's not it's not what you imprint him for, right? If you want to get a triple S crow, it's not because he gives out uh, crit chance; it's because you can get more health on him and you know increases for one his survivability as well as uh, increases uh, his damage on his S three. Though uh, I think at max it's like eighteen percent, maybe twelve percent. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, even at the max, it's not like a huge difference. It's just that you know. You, you care about the health on crowd more than the crit chance on someone else. Uh, what else did I pull recently? I, I pulled on Alencia in about 20 summons. I got her. I don't know why I was just kind of like, I'm going to do two. Um, I, I, I did 10 pulls for Alencia. Uh, the first 10 pull, I didn't get anything. And the second 10 pull, I got her. So uh, 20 summons worth, and I got one. Um, again, I already have a belt of Alencia. I just want more, um, more imprints on her. It'd be good. Uh, but yeah, uh, that aside... Um, uh, I didn't want to pull immediately. One, I didn't have the the bookmarks, and it was going to take a while to do secret shop refreshes, and I didn't want to just waste uh, crystal on bookmark packs. But uh, Politus is here, and we can kind of talk about her a little bit. Um, she looks kind of interesting. Uh, let's click on her here. Uh, I'm probably not going to say much that anyone else hasn't already said, but I think, uh, and I think the best video that kind of summarizes my thoughts from someone else saying them. Uh, I had nothing, you know, independent of me doing anything, they kind of said what I was already feeling and that's why I didn't really, don't really feel like neat. I have to make a video or, or had to make a video on her because it's like, like I said, my thoughts are already out there. Um, but for those of you who watched Dr. Squirrel's videos and if you haven't, um, just search up Dr. Squirrel's Epic 7. Um, his video... Hold on, sorry about that. My audio is being funky. It's kind of weird. Hopefully you can hear the background music. Um, uh, there we go. But anyway, uh, yeah, his, his video kind of encapsulates what I felt about her. She's not very good in anything, like literally anything other than PvP and specifically RTA. Uh, she's not very good in Guild Wars. She doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, there are some, I think uh, Astronox might have made a video where it's like you put a little bit of damage on her and she does pretty good uh, in Arena. Uh, but if you're pulling her... The fact that she does good in Arena is just a byproduct. If you're pulling her, it's because you really want to counter Cleaves in RTA, period. And even in RTA, she's not really that good because what like the two flavor of the month picks right now are obviously Cerise, who doesn't have a non-attack skill anyway, and she's Water into Fire, as well as Fairy Tail Tenebria, who again does not have any non-attack skills and is Water into um, into Politus. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just not a whole lot, especially like like with Cerise leveraging the kind of uh, buffs and stripping and speed that she has. You pair her up, pair her up with either F10A, like I said, uh, or you're pairing her up with something like a an A Tywin. An A Tywin doesn't have any non attack skills either, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, all you're doing is stopping like pure cleaves, and at the higher ends, there's no such thing as pure cleaves. And if you're getting pure cleaved. Um, you're gonna lose those fights no matter what, right? Like, if someone has the gear and the units and the stats and everything to pure cleave you, which is like, oh, I'm gonna go um, Athletica into C Dom into whatever, like, you know, those cleave, we've all seen them. If that happens to you, it's because you can't draft, you're not good at drafting, right? So you gotta get that down better. Uh, you don't have the gear to compete with that kind of speed, so you need to work on that. Um, and you don't have the unit variety to be able to counter that. And adding Politis to your to your group isn't going to save you because people can play around her and they're just going to stomp on you um so basically yeah that's my point is a lot of people like who are less like 
understanding of how arena works uh, rta works specifically they want to just like find band-aid solutions and and other channels and everything would be glad to just sort of sell you that uh, for views and whatnot uh, but like i said uh, dr squirrel probably has the best video on her and if you want to go have an overview of him of her uh i would suggest his his channel in, in that video but yeah like like i said she she's all right like she she can do something um but don't expect her to like solve all your problems you're still gonna get stomped on in RTA if you can't counter cleave regularly you know what I mean like this this pick is gonna save you from cleave 100% of the time they're just gonna see this and maybe start picking around because again you know chances are you probably don't know how to draft very well and you're still gonna get stomped on anyway right so it's just important to keep in mind um, why you're choosing certain units and what you're picking them for and, and how you use them uh, that being said, I do get uh, out cleaved sometimes, um, and part of it is for the drafting, and part of it is also because, uh, like a, you know, gear is a big is a big issue. Uh, the the point I want to make is let, let's pretend we all we're all good drafters, and let's pretend like that's not an issue. Let's pretend you know let's go into the you know imaginary scenarios here. Um, there are times where you just get out geared like there's nothing you can do to beat them and if you are getting out geared by someone who just cleaves you the thing you have to realize is they were going to beat you no matter what you can sit there and be like oh if they didn't cleave and they didn't pick whatever and they didn't just take all the turns um i would have won or whatever it's, no you wouldn't have because if they couldn't do that they would they would just beat you with any other units that they have right it's important to realize that gear is a big deal right i mean you know a lot of people it's kind of obvious, right? I mean, this is Epic 7. You know, gear is the one thing we're doing all day, every day, every day. You just got to improve your gear. But a lot of people don't seem to realize that you're going to lose to someone who has better gear to you than you, no matter what, whether they're cleaving you or they decide to go another route. It's just that cleaving is the most convenient. Um, and people think that you can make up gear gaps with something like Polit Politis, and you're not going to because, yeah, sure, she might counter something like that. But the fact that they have so much better gear than you is they're just going to stomp you out anyway, right? That's, that's just another thing to, to, to keep in mind. Um, and it's something I'm going to probably repeat in, in, in any videos going forward is is because no one really wants to admit it. Like, everybody wants to feel like they have a chance. And unfortunately, your, you know, your gear quality just gives you the chances. And if someone has better gear quality than you, then you're not going to have the chances you want, right? So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, Politis isn't going to make up a huge gear gap. You're still going to get destroyed. Like, don't, you know. So the question is, why am I pulling for her? The, the reason I'm pulling for her is the same reason you kind of pull for every unit, right? Is you need every unit. Um, she may get buffed. She may not. Uh, I don't think she's going to get buffed. She's doing pretty well uh, at what she does. But, um, you know, it's just good to have them. It's better to have the unit and not need it or not be able to use it uh, than to have it later. And later we find out, you know, there's a build that's like, oh, man, this build is really strong for her. Um, but you didn't have the you don't have the unit anymore. I mean, you know, check things like um, SSB, Alencia. Like, Alencia was, like, SSB was limited, so you can kind of, like, understand why people don't have her. Um, but Alencia came out, and she wasn't limited, and then a lot of people didn't pull for her and didn't realize how strong she was in RTA, right? Um, and, you know, she's an, she could be another example. Like I said, I don't think she's, like, going to be the most broken thing ever, but she certainly isn't useless. Um, so I want to stress that. Like, she's not useless. She's just not going to be, like, an end-all, be-all unit. Let's just kind of just look at her kit real quick. She's got a stun on the S1, which actually goes up to uh, 40%, which is pretty interesting. It's almost close to 50% stun. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all right. If you have Abyssal Crown on her, again, the way um, procs work, the way percentage chance things work, she has 40% chance to stun on the S1. Abyssal Crown at max gets you 24%. So when you're trying to count, because either way, the outcome is they get stunned, whether from her effect or from the Abyssal Crown stun. So if you're looking to have um, one of them happen, so either her, her S1 stuns or the Abyssal Crown procs, you just add them together. So at a 40% plus the, the Abyssal Crown gets you to 60, uh, no, yeah, 64%. So you got a 64% chance of stunning on the S1. Um, Theoretically, right? I mean, it's not always gonna like gonna work out the way uh, you want it to, but yeah, theoretically, uh, when you when you when you flip two coins, right? If you want one of them to be heads, so either the first coin can be heads or the second coin can be heads. When it's or, you theoretically have a hundred percent chance of that happening. Now, you know, you do you keep doing that, and there's a there's a whole like series of 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 stuff you can do to 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 find out more accurate, but. 
in theory, on a basic level, that's kind of what you know. If you want, if you want heads out of out of two coins, out of out of a coin flip, you flip two coins, or you flip the coin twice. Uh, if you want at least one heads, um, so that's kind of what this is. But again, you know, it's like well, we're getting constantly screwed over by stuff, so it's not exactly the way it works. But that's the way I calculate it. Um, Astral Guide. This is kind of the thing. the The good thing about her is she doesn't take a whole lot of Molagora. Like you can, you, you know, like I said. Uh, Astronox has a video where he kind of, you know, it was like, oh, she can do a little bit of damage, but I really wouldn't build her that way. Uh, but Astral Guide here, again, you don't have to, like, if, if you're building her damage, then of course you have to, you need all the molas you can get, but it, most of us are probably going to build her damage, so, you know, you don't have to worry about molas. So there's no molas here, you got to just a few here, and then um, a few here for this. Uh, well, you kind of want the, uh, all the way down here to get the 100% here, but, you know, it is what it is. Let's see. So this one will give you the 30% uh, CR boost, then it will stop them from taking 50% uh, of whatever CR they're getting. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't seen any videos and I haven't tested this out, but I'm not entirely sure how this works with next turn mechanics because, um, well, next turn mechanics should still work, right? Because you're not going to get like 50% of your next turn because of this skill. Because I don't think, I'm not entirely sure that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, who knows how that works. Um, hopefully people have tested out and you've, you've seen videos and, and you can assess that yourself, but I don't really know and I'm going to pull on her regardless whether I know or not. Um, but it's interesting because like people want this to counter, uh, like Arby, but there's already so many Arby counters that like, if you're pulling for her to counter Arby, then it's, I think it's too late for you <laughs> at that point. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, and the other thing is, is this, so you can decrease their hit chance and, um, uh, stop debuffs, which is fine. Um, the fact that you strip on this is all right. Um, yeah, it's all right. So, um, you know, the whole, the whole kit is just all right. You know, she'll, she'll, you know, basically she'll take her turn, uh, strip, uh, blind, remove the ability to be buffed. And then there, that's it. So. They can still go after, right? So something like a BBK could still just like destroy everybody. Uh, but it's going to be harder for them to start taking like stealing turns. Basically, one of the most irritating things in RTA for any of you who have run into it uh, is obviously the uh, Ox Slots Spirit's Breath combination where he can just every single turn, he's basically your, a second copy of whatever damage dealer you have on your team because every single turn uh, he boosts up whatever team member you want 100% and then gives them the attack buff. So... Uh, yeah, it's kind of irritating. So basically, like, her main thing is going to be to counter that. But again, for those of you who saw the tournament that, um, uh, what's his name? Shuffles posted and all his tournaments, you know that those strategies aren't really viable in real arena, right? They're viable in low arena, low end arena, because there's so many people, there's such a huge gear difference, right? So there's a bunch of, like, again, it, it's, it's, it comes down to gear stomp, uh, uh, pub stomping, right? So it's like if you're getting dunked on by somebody like that, it's because you're so low you're so low on the totem compared to them that, like, anything would have beat you. Uh, but anyway, so, yeah. It, it looks interesting. She just kind of reminds me of, like, a Dizzy. Like, the way Dizzy kind of, if you build a counter Dizzy, they try to cleave, and if they hit Dizzy and they don't kill her, usually because they usually have different hits, right? They'll have, like, the tie one, as you see in the background over here. To have like the tie went to defense break or whatever so there's there's chances for dizzy to counter in that and then she either counter stuns or counter strips and does stuff and then you know takes her turn and all that stuff she kind of works to me in my mind a little bit like that but obviously i think uh politis is a little more secure in the way that works because uh dizzy could just not counter attack and then you lose the match where uh you're almost you're basically guaranteed politis uh cr boost forward and then you you hinder their cr uh, manipulation um, but yeah, so let's just get in here. Uh, I really hope I don't uh, pity her, and I really don't want her artifacts. So if I get artifacts, hopefully I get a different kind of artifact, and then uh, hopefully we'll get enough. At least I guess hopefully we we'll get enough to um, to do a moonlight summon. And I'll do that on, uh, on the, in the same video too. So let's uh, let's not delay anymore and just kind of get in there. Um, oh, actually, I need to go fill up my barracks real quick. Okay, uh, so yeah, I went to go fill up my barracks, and we can get back in here and start summoning. Uh, I'm just so glad about this, um, that infinite barracks thing on the side there. Uh, it's just insanely useful. It's like, it's just like shove anybody you don't want in there. Uh, especially because you just get, pull a lot of junk out of this. Let's see, this is her. 
Um, there's a lot of people in the guild specifically saying, well, not a lot of people, I mean, mainly the guild leader, uh, telling us that there's probably, like, we need to save, save, save for, uh, whatever collab is coming next, which implies there's a collab coming soon. Uh, is there or is there not? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't have, I don't know, there's not a whole lot of prediction going on here, trying to figure out what, what the next banners are, the same way there is in, like, Fire Emblem. Though the thing with Fire Emblem is like there's a huge for one there's a roadmap and for two there's just already kind of like a lot of it's structured it's kind of like oh, around this time of year last year we did this and this is this um, and I guess maybe it's a lot of that speculation comes from you know whatever happened last year that they're saying but um, I haven't you know I have no idea what's going on in terms of like should I save or should I not save um, but in general I think you know I just always want to save um, for future limiteds. Uh, Oh, there we go. Uh, Adam and Shield is actually one of the few uh, forced artifacts I just need like a bunch of. I have like an army of of Aureuses, but I, I have like I only have one max limit broken Adam and Shield, and the second one's like uh, like two two limit breaks in. Uh, so that's kind of annoying. Oof. So we're at so that's twenty summons, a hundred bookmarks. I wanted to like. I don't know. Uh, five star? Nope, not even a five star. Yeah, so usually I'll either like get it in the first like what two hundred bookmarks or uh, forty summons, or I'll have to pity. Uh, but we'll see. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, we're already a hundred bookmarks in. Uh, the good news is at least I'm getting a lot of dust, and <laughs> theoretically. Like, my extra inventory barracks thing over there is getting to the point where it's like... I'm probably... I have, like... I mentioned that I didn't have enough silver transmit stones to get the, um... Look, there's another lots. I mentioned I didn't have enough uh, silver transmit stones to uh, self-imprint my ML Crow, But actually, I, I mean, I have, like, a huge amount of them just because I have my extra barracks so full. Like, both... I have, not only that, but I have um, both... Dingo and Blaze Dingo at Triple S, and then in my barracks I have like another eight or nine uh, Blaze uh, uh, just regular Dingoes, which means that like what eight? I think they give you like what four or five each one. Every four star gives you like four or five silver transmit stones. Um, so I, theoretically, I have just like a bunch of silver transmits, but I just like I'd rather not um, waste them if I don't have to. Elio's knife is pretty good. I was thinking about running Elia's knife because I just recently six starred my um, Kisei. I was thinking about running Elia's knife on Kisei, but I think the fact that she has because um, Elia's knife gives you penetration uh, when they're at less than 100 percent, so 100 percent HP, which means that like it's basically good on any unit you're not planning to go first, any like uh, assassin units you're not planning to go first. Actually, like someone else comes in, you know, lowers them, basically like an ML Crow, right? Comes in and hits everybody, drops their HP less than 100%, and then anybody you have on the follow up with Elias knife is going to do a decent amount of damage. Um, and I, like I said, I wanted to run that on Kisei. I was thinking about running it on Kisei, but oh please, no! I was thinking about running it on Kisei, um, but she's already got dam uh, penetration on her S uh, on her S2. Up to 60%, in fact. Um, oof, I'm just going to have to pity her. Uh, she's already got 60% penetration on her S2, so, like, that, it's not additive. So, it's like, you don't have 60 plus Elia's knife is another uh, 20. You don't have, like, 80% penetration. It's, like, multiplicative. Um, so, it's yeah, it's just not, you're, you're kind of getting diminishing returns off of it, so... Uh, if you already have a whole lot of damage penetration or a defense penetration, you may as well not just stack more if it's not going to be like additive, like I said. Uh, so uh, I think I'm going to run her. Well, for right now, she's on symbol of unity, but I mean, I might end up running her on uh, portrait just because it's more damage. Um, not that she hits hard to begin with. Uh, she's kind of like a mixture of like hitting decently hard. There's actually like no four stars I need other than Angelica. Um, I actually have enough Surins to, to max out my T-Surin whenever I get her, but as you can see, uh, this account does not have a uh, T-Surin yet, so. 
Uh, that's that. Um, but yeah, so just having Symbol of Unity, getting more damage out of her multiplicatively through Symbol of Unity or something like a portrait is actually better because she's got multipliers. <laughs> There's multipliers on her. You want to multiply your non-native multipliers, right? So every every skill has multipliers, like just like, you know, you know, your attack power and then there's like that power multiplier whatever i don't know there's just two multipliers on them anyway enough about multipliers the the thing is you want to stack as many of those as possible so if you're just adding uh defense penetration to those you're not maximizing them you're just kind of like allowing those to get through even more but when you run portrait you're multiplying like for for one she's got health scaling on her s3 which it's kind of weird because it's based on like how much health she currently has so the more health she has the more she'll damage she'll do uh, but basically that's a third multiplier right that's because every every ability has two multipliers one that's just straight up like your attack how much attack you have a percentage of your attack there's another one in there that's kind of thrown in there just to throw people off i guess i'm not entirely sure uh, but now this one has a third one right and it's it's similar to a lot of people who run um like who have health scaling right just like alencia or, or uh, a ravi or something like that so it's another so it's another multiplier on top of that but additionally her s uh her s1 also has that uh on there too and, and her s1 hits pretty hard when you uh when you soul burn it because uh, the soul burn gives you like a huge multiplier on top of the shield like it well not shield if they're buffed on top of the if they're buffed multiplier and then on top of that uh, i got her artifact um this is the, like the one thing I didn't want to get out of here, uh, just because you really don't want your mages dying. Like if someone's dying, you're you're gonna you're, you're so low that like whatever buffs you get out of this aren't gonna save you. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, like I said, so there's huge multipliers on that S1 to just like one shot like a bunch of people anyway. Um, with the soul burn and then you running the the portrait on top of that, it's just it's the whole lot of math going on that's just basically results in you having huge numbers. Uh, I have a Clarissa and a Kitty Clarissa, all triple S. So again, I said there's not a whole lot of four stars I need other than uh, Angelica. Oof, we're just gonna have to pity her. Come on, please. I mean, at this point, I may as well. But yes, okay. So we didn't hit pity, um, <laughs> but we went more than half our bookmarks are gone now. Can make you anything you want. I guarantee it will be better than having a human around. Indeed. Uh, so let's get out of here. Uh, we have enough of these. Let's go do a moonlight summon. See if we get it lucky. Like all I want from moonlight is more Mersa merges. Or do I have enough? No, I don't have enough for that. I'm, I'm, I have to remember to get this before the uh, the week ends. Uh, more Mersa merges, or, uh, and you can piss right off, that too, come on, or a Tempest Surin is, like, the only other thing I need. I don't have a Crimson Arm in, funnily enough, but, like, at this point, it's like, I really don't care. Um, let's just get it. Ooh, four star, come on. If it's a five star, that'd be pretty crazy, because I just pulled a five star. Okay, so four star, come on, Tempest Surin. No, another Kitty Clarissa. Um, so yeah, that was fine. Um, at least, you know, I got a shine there, um, which is more than most people are getting these days, I think. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, we have, this is our bookmarks. We haven't summoned for Archdemon Mercedes yet. Um, let's actually see, I, I don't know what's after her. So Ken is next. Do I need anything else from here? I mean, I guess that could be useful. Uh, Zerato merges are decently useful, but he's already six stars, so it's kind of uh, not as efficient use of resources. Um, Leo, I have enough to triple S both regular and ML Leo. I actually think I already have the triple S ML Leo. Uh, Corvus is Corvus. Yeah, so there's not a whole lot here. I think I'm just going to wait to see what comes after. Uh, I could summon for her, but like I said, just like reduce the pity and maybe I'll get her, but I don't really, I don't know. When she first came out, I wasn't like losing my schist over her, but like 
I also thought she'd be pretty good, but as time has gone on, I've sort of become more and more disillusioned with her. Um, for one, like, so let's take into consideration how this works. Um, she basically, everybody's running her on counter these days, so that's kind of something to consider. Uh, so she, she basically has like this going on here. For those of you who use, uh, what's her name? Those of you who use uh, Silverblade Araminta, which I just recently got, which is why my pity's reset. Uh, this basically works the same way. Now, let's see where, if we can see here. After using Touch of Chaos, has a 35% chance to activate Burst. I get it sealed. Okay, so it's a little bit different than the way um, Silverblade Araminta's thing works, but it's basically the same. So Silverblade Araminta, her S1, if it burns, will trigger her S2, and it's like an AoE, like kind of like this, right? And it'll, it'll do a debuff as well. Um, so the S1 on, on Silverblade Araminta has a chance to... Um, what is this? Uh, 75 has a 75% chance to uh, seal the, to, to burn them. But the S2 can also proc if they were already burned, which is what's so good about Silverblade Araminta. Um, so you can you can try to burn someone, or if they're already burned, then you can just you know guarantee that S2. Um, whereas here it's a little it's a little more sketch because for one, you have a well, you always have a 35% no matter what, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but it doubles up to 70% if they're sealed. Which is which still isn't as high as um, Silverblade Araminta's chance, right? Because SB's is seventy five percent chance, um, so it's not even as high. But the the thing is, on top of that, this this chance to seal here is what uh, twenty, so seventy. So it's seventy again. So it's seventy, and then you have to proc another seventy after that. Um, whereas Silverblade is just one thing. If this is burned or whatever, you just go off and do this. Um, the only the other problem is this S3 is kind of useless and very like It's got like negative synergy with her kit just because I mean you you want to you need to build up stacks Right, so that's why people run her on counter so she can take her own turn as well as uh, hit people back when it's not her turn uh, Gain stacks and then she uses this but then when you use this it's like So right, <laughs> it's just like you know, this is the biggest like and uh, Ability I've ever I've ever seen it's just like Okay, she does this and then what, right? Um, this thing here doesn't really do anything. Oh, and they both get the uh, the one the twenty five percent combat readiness uh, as well. She gets a focus. Okay, so I wasn't sure. I thought it would be up here. Well, you can't really see my mouse. Uh, I thought the right at the bottom right here it says twenty five percent combat readiness and gaining one focus. I thought that would be up here in 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 orange letters the same way it is on her S one, but it's actually built in here. So if she counters. That's one. So she takes her turn. That's one stack. If Twisted Power goes off, that's two stacks. And then she counters. That's a third stack. And then she activates Twisted Power again. That's a fourth stack. And you already got four stacks, right? And you know, just counter attack one more, and then a turn after that, she'll be able to S three. That's kind of the idea: is to just start doubling up on your stacks. But even then, it's like you're doubling up on your stacks to do what exactly? To hit everybody with an S three that's just gonna burn them. Um. Yeah, and then you can't trigger counterattacks, right? Like, I, I just, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with her that Silverblade Araminta can't just do, right? Because Silverblade can take turn one, she can um, she can S3 and then stun everybody, and it doesn't matter if they can counterattack or not because they're stunned, right? Uh, and then, you know, she inflicts two burns. At 100%, she inflicts two burns. Silverblade inflicts uh, two burns at 50% each. Uh, so theoretically you should get one burn, but probably not um, But yeah, so you can't even use this turn one, right? So that's kind of out of the question uh, And then she's got this and she can run and for those of you, I guess I mean I haven't seen one and I'm and I'm kind of working on that Which is why I kind of decided not to summon an arch demon shadow uh, Because I'd rather save that gear that I would use for her and put it on silverblade araminta because um, And I had already kind of I guess I mean you can kind of use a, a pretentious word like postulated But I kind of already put forth to my guild uh, before Archdemon Merce uh, Mercedes came out, the idea of running a Silverblade Araminta on counter, just make her really tanky, um, not focus, because a lot of people focus on attacks, they can stun, uh, crowd control as well as like do decent damage with the burns, but I think just kind of ignore all that, run around Abyssal Crown, counter set, tanky as hell, 
And there you go, right? So you, you let someone go first who's going to strip S3, and then you stun a bunch of people. Maybe not everybody. Um, theoretically, you should stun everybody if uh, if you've got her on Abyssal Crown and, and enough uh, effectiveness. Uh, and then, you know, they try to kill her, and then you find out that she's tanky, and she S1s you, burns you, has a chance to stun you, a, 25%, a 24% chance to stun you. Uh, and then if she burns you, she gets the S2 off, which is an AoE chance to stun again. Uh, and on top of that, she gets 25% CR boost, right? So that's kind of my idea is 90% of the reason why I'm so disillusioned with Archdemon is just, you know, I've got Silverblade Aramintha, who, like, she can't lock down people's uh, passives the same way, like, she can. But, like, if they're stunned, who cares if their passive is active or not, right? It's not that big a deal. Um, of course, there are some... No, I won't, I'm not going to pretend like it's useless. There's some passives that are really going to... Um, be in trouble there right so something like a uh an a tywin his passive is going to cause you some trouble because you might not stun him or he might cleanse it or whatever right um who's the other one that was really annoying a uh, tempest Surin, of course uh if you don't steal her passive and you like stun her or whatever and you drop her below 70 percent hp she's going to cleanse all that and come back and just hit you really hard and then you try to counter attack her and you you um again you try to counter attack her you you maybe you stun her on the counter or maybe you um maybe you uh get the burn and then you get you know whatever all that stuff gets erased because she's just going to erase it all anyway right um so those are two strong examples of that happening as well as like you know take uh what's the name arbiter vildred where arbiter vildred well you know he'll just come back to life and just kill her um but i think in most cases like for one you have to hit this buff and you have to hit this anyway which arbiter villagers are now running counter attack with uh with dream blade as well as you know people are running dream blade on their uh on their what's her name the girl you know the tempest sirens uh so there's, there's a whole lot of things that can go wrong with silverblade aramintha but my point is there's equally as many things that can go wrong with archdemon shadow um and if it's if because to me it's kind of a toss-up either I, I i take archdemon or you know i build silverblade and i think i'm just gonna stick with silverblade this might be kind of like a not a sunken cost fallacy right but it's sort of like a um it might be me justifying to myself, like, oh, I, I spent all those re those resources. Not, you know, I didn't spend that many. For those of you who saw that video, I actually pulled it pretty early on. Um, but I had already kind of spent stuff on her, so maybe I'm just just justifying to myself using Silverblade. Uh, but to me, they're, they're both so similar in the way they work and the way they can be made to work that I'd rather prefer uh, having Silverblade, especially because Silverblade is a really good unit to follow up after Cerise, now that Cerise is, like, uh, meta. Uh, and personally, I don't have a, what's his name? I don't have an A Tywin. So uh, having Cerise go, then, you know, anything happening and then having, you know, my silver blade. Because one of the things that people like need to realize when you're, especially when you're drafting something, a thing to point out for you guys is pay attention to who they have as a follow-up to Cerise because Cerise isn't always like the biggest problem. She is a huge problem. Don't get me wrong. If, if they, if they took Cerise, then you need to have answers for her but she's not the biggest problem one of the bigger problems is cerise into like an a tywin that just comes in after you're all stripped and then just stuns like everybody and slows them well they're already slow from from cerise but you have two chances to slow if one of them gets resisted right so that's i mean that's that's really the bigger problem in my eyes is is having to deal with the follow-up right because as long as you can play you can do stuff and that's kind of what the other problem is so when you a lot of times you'll see cerises and who goes, who else goes who else is being run with Cerise? Well, uh, Fairy Tail Tenebria. And one of the problem with her, right, is she doesn't let you play for a turn, the same way a stun doesn't let you play, because she taunts everyone, um, and then you can't play. So you, you know what I'm saying? Like I think and that's kind of again, going back, right, that's what made uh and we, we he's actually fallen off pretty hardcore just because I think the the seventy five percent is kind of like annoying to deal with. But uh, it's it's one of the major reasons we've seen we saw um, what's his name? Uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank here again. Uh, what was his name? We have him over here. Let's just go take a look at him. His uh, he's that he's the light version of the the water guy. He's a light mage. Uh, why does it always start off on that? I don't care. Well, he's actually pretty. He's actually getting up there just because of the buffs that he got are pretty crazy. But uh, where is he? There we go. Benevolent Roman. 
it's actually one of the reasons why we started seeing Benevolent Roman because just this, like the, the same way where if you take Basar, Basar strips and then puts the unbuffable, and that's all fine and dandy. They can't buff now, and then you reduce their thing. So if you have follow up, you can destroy them. But if they don't, they can still just basically take their turn, and you can kind of draft around not being able to buff. Right? It's not that big a deal. Um, but people started really taking a liking to Benevolent Roman because he basically takes away your turn. He has a chance to take away your turn because he goes in. And now you really have nothing you can do because everybody's silenced, right? But the problem was that he was like lacking a lot of consistency because his, his um, silence was only 75% chance. But who cares when you can just pull the limited uh, Fairy Tale Tenebria who has 100% chance to uh, provoke. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. And, you know, uh, where is she? She should be here somewhere, yeah, right? Uh, not only that, right? So, you know, redirect to provoke for one turn. So it's 100% chance in that. But not only that, right? She, basically, this is this is kind of the reason why so many fairy tales and everybody's are fast is because they already had the gear for ML Basar or uh, or not ML Basar. They already had the gear for Basar or ML Roman, and they just kind of shifted it onto fairy tales and because she's in, infinitely more consistent. She's just the same. She does the same thing though. Uh, she strips, unable to be buffed, and the redirect to provoke. So basically, you're 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 basically combining um, ML Roman with DJ Basar, right? Uh, but this is even worse than Roman because Roman, like, being, like, you get silenced and that's a big deal. But you can still kind of choose who you want to attack because, you know, you have your basic attack you can choose who you want. It's actually worse getting re uh, provoked, redirected, provoked because you don't even get to choose who, who, who you're attacking. It just attacks for you, right? Uh, and then, you know, she gets this off and then everybody, basically, there's a random chance to get, like, any debuff out of, like, five of them or something random debuff one two it says three here but i've seen her do other ones like minus attack and all that stuff but i don't know uh but basically you and i already know that every time she pulls this off it's every it's a team-wide uh defense break it's i mean you know it happens every time there's, there's never a time where uh she doesn't get the team-wide defense break but it is what it is that's kind of what i'm saying here is that basically this skill because of this these are basically one skill, and she has uh, cannot be buffed, redirect or provoke, so she steals your whole turn, and everybody's defense broken, all in the same in the same one swift action. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to point out was Cerise, while being a very dangerous and very strong unit, when you're going into RTA and you look at drafts, pay close attention to who they draft after Cerise or who's the follow up for Cerise, because a lot of times you can actually deal with a Cerise team. Uh, if they don't have a lot of follow-up, if they don't have like, you know, like I said, if they don't have um, a silver blade to just stun everybody or a uh, uh, an a tie one to stun everybody or, you know, a fairy tale to never to, to just provoke everyone. Um, so that's kind of one of the, the, the I guess, a, a bit of tidbit of strategy for those of you out there is like, just pay attention to who they're running as a, um, as a ancillary, I guess, or, or just, you know, a side to um cerise um but yeah so that that was kind of that uh but yeah that's all i wanted to say just kind of some thoughts on um i, I don't know how i got tangentially uh distracted by cerise but uh some thoughts on um arch demon shadow i'm gonna start building politis um 270 bookmarks not where i would have wanted to be at like at least over 300 um but that's all right um i can't complain if i didn't have to you know I, problematically i could have just been at zero bookmarks right so 270 is better than nothing so that, that's kind of where we're at here uh tywin this crown of glory i have one and it's actually kind of useless like it's decently strong but uh yeah i don't know it's just why there's no whole there's not a whole lot of use for it because uh a tywin just does this better and you know this is no replacement for a tywin so um you know <laughs> just gotta get the real thing um but yeah tywin himself i feel like i mean he's really not that useful he's just kind of um imprints for regular time uh, for a tywin uh he's got that 100 percent defense break on his s3 uh yeah and he only gives himself a defense buff which is what's kind of annoying uh if he gave himself if he gave team-wide defense buff damn that'd be pretty crazy like i think you'd see a lot more of him because defense buff is no joke um especially like just like having 
having like again like having Cerise, the follow up of him, even if like because you know Cerise is people usually trying to run control. Even if you're not running control, just Cerise into a defense break makes it really hard for people to like come back from that. And you could just run like Alencia or something, or just like you know bruiser it up afterwards, and you're still basically solid after that. Um, right. So it's not the worst thing, but like I said, you can you can you can do stuff with Cerise. Uh, aside from just that's what makes her so strong it's not like you don't have to just run cc and then just kind of steal everybody's turn um but you know that's one of the stronger things you can do with her uh then because like if you if you do this if you do this right if you don't get the stun off something like a dj basar or a destina or just any cleanser can just come in and cleanse and then you're solid after that or like what's her name um lilius right lilius is very strong now because uh, if Cerise comes in, debuffs everybody. If she doesn't have a stunner right after her, then you know Lilius can just cleanse all that stuff, and then we can move on with our lives and not really be too bothered by it, right? Um, so what, what what's really important about Cerise is again, like I said, you just need to have a follow up to her. Uh, and if you can if you can have, if you have a cleanser, then you counter fifty percent of what Cerise does. So you know it's pretty good. Uh, this is actually really good because you know attack break uh, attack. Attack buff with the crit chance is you know really strong, and you just give someone thirty percent uh, CR. So uh, his S one wait max health. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, his S one, uh, you know, dispelling a buff. It's not as strong as I don't think it's as strong. It's a seventy five percent chance. Actually, it might be because I think sixty percent chance on um, on SC Raz, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, it's all right. Basically, the the thing is, everybody ran him for cleaving um, for 100% defense break, but even uh, no one's cleaving uh, with him very much anymore, unless it's like arena rush time or, or well, there's no arena rush time anymore. It's just kind of like people just attack whenever. Um, but yeah, personally, I, I have him. I don't I haven't used them for anything. I haven't wanted to use them for anything. Um, having like a 100% guaranteed team wide debuff uh, defense break isn't really like a huge priority. A lot of the units that need it already kind of have it. So like F. Clurry, just being able to defense break and 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 provoke one person in RTA is enough to like swing an entire match. So like gambling on like oh I'm gonna try to defense break everybody isn't really worth doing. Um, who else? Uh, Alencia has a defense break on S1. Um, I, I use Fairy Tail uh, regular Tenebria sometimes, and like I said, <laughs> Fairy Tail Tenebria just does his job so much better because. Not only like she's she's so self contained because she's got a strip already, uh, and then she just taunts everybody into someone else, and then you know you get the defense break after that. So, but yeah, so um, hopefully I was able to add a little bit of insight. Um, I just kind of tacked this all this discussion stuff on at the end because if you're here, you're you probably already left already for the. Um, if you're here for the summoning, you probably already left already. So you know anybody who is here this far, you're you're here because you want to hear what I have to say about some of these things. So that's kind of why I tacked this stuff on at the end. Um, but yeah, so good luck on your summons and hopefully you guys get her sooner rather than later. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to level her, I'm going to level her up and get her to 50, but I don't know if I'm going to get her to 60 and, and start gearing her. Um, because for one, I don't really have enough gear to go around right now. Um, one of the good things about her, she doesn't have a huge gear requirement because like I said, she has a 30% CR boost if they do not attack skills. Uh, and that, that should be enough to run her like what, 240 speed and you're basically solid. She can still cut and then um, do whatever you need her to do. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to build her. I'm going to have to take a look at my gear, take a look at what's going on. But um, to, to, to put it in perspective, I don't even have my Fairy Tail Tenebrio six starred is how bad I am with like getting these units where they need to be. Um, and I don't have Fairy Tail Tenebrio six starred specifically because I don't have the gear to get her to 280 speed. Um, my Cerise is barely hitting 271 speed as it is, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have that kind of gear, and I don't have that kind of, like, competitive uh, speed range. So, I'm not in too big a hurry to, like, start six-starring a lot of, like, first-turn units. Um, which is, you know, she, she's kind of, like, again, she's kind of the solution to that, right? I don't have to gear a bunch of first-turn units if I have her, but even then, it's like, she still has high gear requirements that I don't necessarily have right now. Uh, to just, you know, throw on a unit that, you know, might help me deter cleaves. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, so, you know, like I said, I've already tried to end this video a few times already. But yeah, good luck out there on your summons. And um, hopefully you guys can do a lot more with her than I am. Because she's basically going to be in storage for a while until I can decide to, like, build her. Or we actually get a build. 
part of me is also waiting to see like wh how people are going to build her because uh, right now it's just speed gear with uh you know hitting those uh gear requirements those, those speed requirements um but i'd really like to see like what uh uh her final form is right you know what's like the best politis that we're gonna see um but yeah so you know that's it for today